Hey there, heroes. Uh, I know it's been a long time. I've done a few videos recently. Overall, we haven't been producing a lot of videos for our, our channel. We've been doing a lot for Tales for the Flip Side. Go over there, check out how to open a comic book shop. Like, subscribe to those guys. While you're here, if you like the, our new content, as I'm gonna go over some, uh, everybody knows I'm the indie guy, right? I love independent comics, all different years. Um, I just have a, a real affection for them. We're gonna go over some of the companies that were flashing the pans. They didn't last very long, but they produced some really great comics that a lot of people don't know about. And when you're in the dollar bins, 50 cent bins, you can find these books. You know, it's not gonna make you a fortune. You're not gonna get rich off of them. They're probably not gonna make any movies for them, but you're gonna really enjoy some of these stories. Some of the comics went on to move over to other uh, comic book companies. And we'll go over that too. So this first episode is gonna be about Speakeasy Comics. They opened in 2005, a guy named Fortier, and it was a Canadian company. They had 32 titles. They were only open for a year and a half. Well, they really started in 2004. First book came out 2005, and they were closed by the middle of 2006. I can't give you a synopsis of the books because I read them when they came out in 2005. My memory's not that great. I went looking through my bins and I really didn't have any that I could show. We're gonna put some um, pictures up so you can see what the books looked like. First one I really loved was Hero at Large. Funny, it only got two issues before they closed down. It was a really great book. Sadly, they didn't. that book didn't move on to anywhere else. I would have really loved to hear, see the conclusion of that. But I remember that book very fondly. Like I said, that, that name came to me immediately when I was thinking back and I couldn't remember exactly what it was about. Kind of think it was about a homeless hero. It was really great. There was also Lone Bow, so very much like Green Arrow. Most people would probably know either the Atomica, which went went on. It was an award-winning book. It went on. It moved to uh, a couple of different companies after that. I think it also got uh, printed by Image at, at one point. The art on Atomica, the cover art is insane. The art through the whole book is really great. It's Atomica, the red hero, I think. So it's like a Russian superhero. Cool book. Like I said, the art is phenomenal. The story doesn't really punch back to me. So I think that was more of an art book than a story book, but check it out. And maybe uh, it's something of your tastes. There was also Of Bitter Soul. Of Bitter Soul went on to Image and it was printed for a while there. Then there was eight different books of their 32 that went to uh, Marcosia. And we'll talk in a little bit about Marcosia, who's actually still around now. They're kind of changed their format, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So Speakeasy had a great idea and a great idea, of, uh, a great eye for talent, great idea for a comic uh, company. Uh, sadly, they were undercapitalized and marketing wise and financial wise, they didn't, their idea didn't match their execution. I'm a big guy on execution. I think that the artists and the writers really executed their books. I think the company itself couldn't execute marketing and distribution. If you find these books, they are super low print, super low print. Another book, and you can actually see the numbers, a lot of the numbers of Grimoire was one of their big books. And I think the highest selling one of the Grimoire was like 4,000. Most of, their, most of the Grimoire series was like around 3,000 copies. So these books are pretty low print. Uh, so they will be really rare in the future. I don't think they'll have any value because I don't, I don't think that anybody that has the, owns the IP, I believe the creators themselves owned all of the IP for their stories. If they aren't hooked up with Hollywood or have any way of getting the stories into the hands of producers, production companies, or film companies. I just don't think you'd get a chance to see them. Atomica would be very cool. I mean, it, it looks very cinematic in, in, the, in the comic itself. Uh, I think Grimoire really would lend itself to a uh, animated series. I'm not gonna list all 32, but they, you can find them. It's actually pretty hard to find online. So I went to Comic Book Realm, and you can't search by publisher. So you can't really find out what they all publish by. Where I ended up finding all 32 
was on comicbookpriceguide.com. You can search by publisher on that series and they did have all the books by Speakeasy. Even on that site, they didn't have scans of every single one of the books. Even ones that had like three and four issues, they didn't have any of the four issues. So the print run is so low that the companies who show you what books are out there don't have pictures of them. If you watch my show over on Tales from the Flip Side, I went to uh, Overstreet Access and they only had three of the books from Speakeasy listed on their site. Now I know they're adding stuff all the time and where are you gonna put your focus, right? Are you gonna put your focus on Marvel, DC, and Image? Or are you gonna do all these really tiny imprints that only lasted a year and a half? So I understand that why they don't have all of them. It's a brand new system, but I'm sure in the future they will. And I'm sure that the Overstreet Price Guide book would definitely have them all listed. Again, you'll have to know the name of the book because the Overstreet doesn't, you can't go through your Overstreet by publisher. It's, it's done alphabetically. As far as comic wise, to do 32 books in a year and a half, they also did a, a bunch of graphic novels, single uh, original graphic novels, which was, really one of the, like that was kind of the start of that becoming a bigger thing. I mean, they've been done for a long time. Graphic novels, the way I define graphic novels are, are is an original, right? So it's in, in the trade paperback form, but it's all original art and story. Trade paperbacks to me is when you say it's a trade paperback, that's a reprint of a story that came out on floppies. I've said it several times in different shows, just for the new people that are tuning in, that's the way I see them. If you hear me say graphic novel, it means that it was an original piece of work. If you hear me say trade paperback, that it's a reprint of floppies. Then there's a couple other different terminologies. Um, usually when they say GN, even though that means graphic novel, it's usually a different size. And they use that a lot when they're talking about mangas. Uh, and manga is a terminology of its own, very similar to a graphic novel. Uh, that's just the Japanese name of it. Uh, and now I've been just <laughs> off track again. So let's get back to it. Speakeasy Comics. They were putting out books every month. The problem was they didn't get the books finished before soliciting them. So there was a lot of delays. There was a, they had a lot of issues. For somebody that was reading everything that came out on Speakeasy, the first two books that they came out with, I wanna say one of them was Heroes at Large and one of them was Grimoire. It might've been the, like, somewhere in the very beginning. Uh, as soon as I read those, I went to my comic shop. I wasn't, an owner, I wasn't an owner at the time. And I said, I want everything that comes out on Speakeasy. So everything came out, one in my box. I didn't end up collecting all 32 books because I don't, I, at the time, and still am not a graphic novel collector. So I wasn't reading the graphic novels. So I did get pretty much every one of the single issues that came out. Now what happened was when that when that company failed and they went out of business, there was a there was studio inside of that comic imprint that made eight of the 32 books, and they took all eight books and moved over to Macosia, which is a company that was started the same time 2005 in U the UK, and they still are open today. They do mostly graphic novels. They do a lot of digital comics. When they started out, what they did is they, they were a, light, a company that picked up a bunch of licensings. Uh, so I believe they were the only ones that had a Starship Trooper license. If I'm wrong, please comment. But they had like eight different series. It seemed like they had like eight different series, but it was really an ongoing series with just different arcs. So like one through four was a certain arc, and then five through, I think, eight or 10 was another arc. And I think it got up to like, I wanna say it got up to like issue 24, 26, something like that. But that's where they started. And then they brought on all these books, all eight books. So it gave them a lot of original content, original IP immediately. Like right away, they, they jumped on running. They also then started to create some more of their own independent creator owned books, uh, original stuff. Uh, one of them was uh, Carnival of Souls. I think that's a name that's been used a bunch of times. I don't know if it was a play on the novel. Uh, it may have been a bunch of really great covers for both of those series, Starship Troopers 
and um, Carnival of Souls. There's a Clayton Crane number, f the number five issue had a B cover that's a Clayton Crane. It's an amazing clown cover. I think it book, I think it lists for like three bucks. Uh, you can usually find them in dollar bins. Really, really, really cool. I mean, amazing cool cover. And a lot of the Starship Troopers, if you like science fiction and you like science fiction art, a lot of those covers in that Starship Troopers run are amazing. Surprisingly, like this is a company that has figured out how to survive this long and you've never heard of them, right? So they're based in the UK. They're, they're, they make a lot of U stuff printed and, and sold in the UK. Again, it's M-A-R-K-O-S-I-A, Marcosia. The, owner, the founder's last name is Marcos. So he just added an IA to the end of his name and it became the comic book company. They still have a website, it's marcosia.com. You can go check them out. Not only do they take on those eight books, but they picked up that idea of doing original one-shot graphic novels. And they've produced a lot of them over the years. They have over, now they've had over a hundred titles that were, were sold in the American mass market that you can find on online in either comic book realm, comic book price guide. Again, you can search by the publisher. You can go to um, Overstreet Access and, and go by publisher. And they had a hundred different titles that come out and you can check out each one. One thing I, with the price guides I wish they would add is just like a little synopsis of what, like you have to be searching, like you can't just like find stuff. Like, hey, I wanna, I wanna read a sci-fi book that has like gods in it and you put God, sci-fi gods, and like it would give you a list of comics and then give you a little synopsis of each book. If there's a site out, that, out there that does that and you know about it, please put it in, share it with the community because I'm always looking for stuff to read that I've never heard of. Old guys like me, most of us are, you know, you hear us all the time in the comic shop. Oh, I really don't like anything that's that much of everything that's coming out now. We, we always looking for some of the older stuff. Um, I do like a lot of the independent books that are out right now, but I love finding these small imprints and we're gonna shine some lights on some of these imprints in the future. Coming up, I think next I'm gonna do Capital Comics. It'll, Capital Comics will run right into First Comics because when Capital Comics went out of business, they moved, a lot of the books moved over to First. So keep reading comics. Stay tuned for more content, and I hope you're loving our shorts.